And the fact of the matter is, we watch this again right in front of our own face. Cat Williams, who is known for dropping some truth bombs, has apparently released a missile that is set to obliterate certain grapevine for weeks to come. The 52-year-old comedian's words came on the back of a string of statements from Michael Jackson's family members and friends on the passing of the musical icon. What did the celebrated comedian say? And why should other prominent black artists take note? You knew it was gonna happen. He told us and we didn't know. He named his last tour. This is it. A video making rounds on the internet shows Cat Williams releasing some truth missiles about the passing of one of the greatest musicians of all time, Michael Jackson. In his usual no-holds-barred style, Cat Williams insinuated that the pop icon was eliminated by some of the industry players right before our very own eyes. Though all evidence points to the fact that Michael Jackson OD'd on medication, Cat Williams alleged that it was all planned. According to Cat, Michael Jackson knew it was going to happen and gave his fans hints of plans by some evil individuals to end him, but they didn't catch his drift. Cat claimed that one of the hints was when he named his last tour, This Is It. He alleged that the pop icon knew he was at the end of his life and that he wouldn't survive to organize another tour, which is why he gave it that name. True to MJ's words, the This Is It tour happened to be his last, as he passed away in the same year that he made that announcement. The comedian observed that MJ didn't make the announcement in a celebratory manner. Instead, he sounded like he was tired of fighting the evil in the industry, and he had given you. So, Cat Williams appears to think that MJ's passing was pre-planned by the industry greats who disliked the power he wielded. Many fans who saw Cat Williams's video appeared to agree with the comedian. One wrote, Cat Williams is a prophetic comedian, true and funny. Another aggrieved fan also wrote, For years, Michael Jackson was telling the world about the evil things going on within the industry. They assassinated his legacy when he finally decided enough was enough. It's sad that his childhood was taken from him, and no one understood that he was the way he was because he wasn't able to experience what it was to grow up normally. Hence, his personality was stunted. He was a brilliant man-child, and his life story had a sad ending. Others also suggested that the industry didn't like people like Cat Williams for his outspokenness, which is why they tried to cancel him. A fan commented, this is why the industry tried to cancel him. He was speaking on S, they were trying to hide. Other commenters like this fan recounted how they took MJ's passing. They wrote, I cried like a baby when I heard he was gone. I called my mama and cried on the phone. I'm even tearing up now. Michael Jackson was found unconscious in his Los Angeles home by his physician Conrad Murray at his Los Angeles home. The physician tried to resuscitate him but his pulse was weak, so a call was placed to paramedics, who rushed him to the hospital, where the doctors confirmed his demise. According to medical reports, the pop icon lost his life to overdosing on the prescribed surgical anesthetics and antidepressants. The records established that his personal physician administered the to him the night before his passing, raising several eyebrows within the industry and the fandom. What many people found surprising was his personal doctor's failure to inform the paramedics and the physicians at the hospital of the d**ks he had administered to MJ the night before. Even worse, the coroner's report indicated that the doctor had injected MJ with lethal levels of the medications. These revelations angered many fans and they started calling for Conrad Murray's head. Soon, Conrad Murray was arraigned before the court and charged with voluntary manslaughter. The physician pleaded not guilty and told the press, I have done all that I can do to help the police. I told the truth, and I have faith the truth would prevail. Murray's trial lasted for six weeks, with the jury given an extra two days to deliberate on the matter. On the 29th of November 2011, Murray was convicted and sentenced to four years in prison for voluntary manslaughter. The prosecution argued that it was Murray's injections that caused the icon to lose his life and therefore pushed for a stiffer punishment. However, the doctor's defense argued that he should be put on probation instead of prison because he had no criminal record. As expected, the four-year sentence angered the family and fans as they thought that Dr. Conrad deserved worse punishment than what was handed to him. The rumor mill then went into overdrive with a million explanations and theories about MJ's passing. One prominent theory surmised that MJ was eliminated on purpose, and the doctor was in on the act all along. They questioned why a doctor of his reputation would administer higher levels of 
when he knew full well the consequences. They also wondered why he didn't inform the paramedics and physicians of the OD so they could start emergency procedures to reduce the effects of the overdose in his system. Many conspiracy theorists thus concluded that Dr. Murray was in on the act of MJ's elimination. Probably he was promised he wouldn't get a stiffer punishment and would be set up for life, which is why he accepted the job. Others also thought that the doctor was just a fall guy and that he was set up by the elite to get rid of Michael Jackson, a sentiment that the late singer's sister Latoya Jackson shared. Latoya, who attended every court hearing in the company of her family, tweeted several times, clamoring for help to get justice for her late brother. She thought that MJ was a victim of greedy and selfish people who didn't want to see him succeed in the industry. One of her tweets asked other witnesses to be called for questioning to help unravel the purported mystery surrounding MJ's death. The tweet read, There are wives, girlfriends, and employees who know exactly what happened to Michael. Please come forward and tell what really happened. In another tweet, she insinuated that Murray knew exactly what went on on the night her brother passed on, but he didn't want to open up for fear of retribution from the powers that be. Michael worked his entire life for his children. Please help us get justice. Dr. Murray is a very small piece of the puzzle, she wrote. I feel like screaming. Murray knows exactly what happened at Carrollwood and who else is behind all of this. The ever-tweeting Latoya then claimed that her brother was eliminated for his money, but exonerated her family, saying that they had no hand in his passing. Whenever someone is murdered, you follow the money trail and you see who has the most to gain. Those are normally the ones responsible. And then she added, the family has absolutely nothing to do with his estate. Interestingly, fans were divided on Latoya's sentiments. Some agreed with her that the doctor was in on the act all along, given the reasons stated earlier in the video. However, there was a small section of fans who thought that the doctor was innocent of all the charges and that he was only dispensing his duties. According to them, the media and law enforcement were only scapegoating Conrad Murray when there were other issues surrounding MJ's elimination. For example, they pointed out that MJ was addicted to sleep and pain medications for years, and that his family tried to stage an intervention in 2007. However, their efforts were thwarted when they got to the gate of the estate, only to be turned away by his security. They also claimed that several medications were found at the singer's residence after he passed, most of them under fraudulent names. According to one 2004 police report, the late singer was taking up to 40 anti-anxiety medications. Thus, the fans believed that Dr. Murray was only a victim of circumstance and should be left off the hook with a slap on the wrist. However, Paris Jackson, MJ's daughter, didn't side with such sentiments. Like Latoya, she believes that her father was assassinated by people who were after his money and legacy. In an interview with Rolling Stone, Paris claimed that all the pieces of evidence pointed to the fact and only true fans would know it. Absolutely, my dad was eliminated, because it's obvious, all arrows point to that. It sounds like a total conspiracy theory, and it sounds like BS, but all real fans and everybody in the family know it. It was a setup. It was BS. However, unlike some fans and her aunt Latoya, Paris didn't want to place the blame squarely at the feet of Dr. Conrad Murray. She thought that the whole thing was a chess game that involved many people who had or wanted a stake in MJ's estate. So, she didn't think it was one person, but a lot of people. Interestingly, Paris gave a hint that she knew more than what she was telling. Her claim that it was a chess game suggests that the whole plot is complex and giving out secrets might only muddy the waters. After all, nobody would want to take the fall for eliminating the musical icon his fame and worldwide reach could spell doom for anyone who openly tried to end him. Thus, all the perpetrators would prefer to remain in the shadows and pull strings to get things done, at least in Paris's worldview. So, she preferred to keep all that she knew to herself and hoped that she could bring justice to her father when she also became rich and powerful. And if she didn't, the 25-year-old model hoped that someday her dad would get the justice he deserved. Speaking to Rollin Stone magazine, the model and actress said, I definitely do want justice but it's a chess game, and I am trying to play the chess game the right way. And that's all I can say about that right now. Paris also claimed that she hadn't healed or recovered from her father's demise, but she's learned to live with it. They always say, time heals, but it really doesn't. You just get used to it. I'll live life with the mentality of okay. I lost the only thing that has ever been important to me. However, Janet Jackson, the baby of the Jackson family, had a different approach to the demise of the brother that she loved dearly and was close to. 
She apparently didn't want a part of all the conspiracy theories and media coverage that were raging about MJ that she had to turn off the TV. According to her, the whole stuff was driving her crazy, and thus, she had to tune out of the madness that was going on around her. She explained that she didn't have that proverbial thick skin to accommodate all the gossip, back and forths, and conspiracies. People can have rhinoceros skin, but there's a point when something's going to hurt you. Not everyone is stone stone. She claimed that her only source of news on what was going on in America and around the world was her chef. Janet chose to use the time to fondly remember her brother. She recalled the last time she saw him, which was on the 14th of May, two days before she turned 43. The occasion was a family celebration, and the kids were running around having a field day in the house. According to Janet, he and Michael taunted and teased each other while they ate Thai food. After the celebration, she left for her house but kept calling her beloved brother, telling him how great the occasion was. A few days after the celebration, Janet flew to Atlanta to work on Tyler Perry's Why Did I Get Married Too, but still kept in touch with her brother. It was on the set that she got the call that MJ had gone on to eternity. She quickly left the set and returned to LA to join her family, who had gathered for a private family grief, with the paparazzi in attendance. One event at the private ceremony that moved all and sundry to tears was when the then 11-year-old Paris walked up to the microphone and chimed in, Daddy has been the best father you could ever imagine, before holding on to Janet for support. Recounting that precious moment, the scream hitmaker said she was very proud of her niece for eulogizing her father in the grandest way she could. She said of Paris, People said to me that Michael's daughter speaking really gave them a sense of how he was as a father in her words. Paris is incredibly smart. They are all so smart. She's a sweet girl. The kids are doing well. They're with all their cousins. That family love will keep them going. After the event, Janet just said a few words to the media and then headed back to Atlanta to finish shooting the movie. To cope with her brother's passing, the Grammy Award winner resorted to work, penning several albums, starring in TV commercials, and headlining concerts. She still misses her brother and hopes that she one day gets to meet him again. Janet appears to sincerely not weigh in on all the brouhaha surrounding MJ's demise, but not all her family members have that calmness, and certainly not her fans. Kanye West, notorious for his controversial tweets, also suspected foul play in the demise of the pop icon. Taking to Twitter, the rapper claimed that her now ex-wife Kim Kardashian saved his children and that MJ gave him hints of who was behind his demise. He wrote in a bizarre tweet, MJ told you about Tommy before they killed him. Kim saved my daughter's life in the name of Jesus. It's God's choice only. I will live for my children, Chris, I'm in Cody if you're not planning another one of your children's Playboy shoots. Kanye was referring to Tommy Motola, the former CEO of Sony, who had fallen out with Michael Jackson before his demise. However, many fans took Kanye's rants with a grain of salt as they were now accustomed to them. Nevertheless, a few fans felt that Ye knew what he was about, and his revelations shouldn't be taken as the ramblings of a patient with mental issues. According to them, Kanye was in the same industry, in fact, a core part of the industry Industry. Therefore, he knew what was going down. They felt that if there were anyone who would have information about MJ's passing, it would be Kanye, who is also not afraid to speak his mind. Curiously, MJ himself had accused Tommy of being evil and mistreating black artists. The whole beef started years ago, but it came to public knowledge when MJ spoke out publicly at a news conference in 2002. At the press conference, he accused his own label, Sony, and its executive producer, Tommy Mottola, of racism. Record companies really really do conspire against their artists. They steal, they cheat, they do whatever they can, especially from the black artists. Sony, Tommy Mottola, the president of the record division, he is a mean, he's a racist, and he's very, very, very devilish. Illustrating his statement, the pop icon produced a poster of the depicted Tommy Mottola with devilish horns and a pitchfork. He then held a placard that read, Sony Music Kills. According to sources, Jackson was upset with Sony because the label refused to promote his 2001 Invincible album. Another reason was that the label failed to release a song that he had recovered for victims and survivors of the 2011 terror attacks on the U.S. He also explained that the music labels don't take care of their black artists, which is why they're constantly touring to make ends meet. They steal, they cheat, they do everything they can, especially against the black artists. People from James Brown to Sammy Davis Jr., some of the real pioneers that inspired me to be an entertainer, these artists are always on tour because if they stop touring, they will go hungry. If you fight for me, you're fighting for all black people, dead and alive. To add salt to injury, Jackson's negotiations with his label regarding the licensing of his album masters went south, leaving him no choice but to contract with Sony. As a result, the bad singer refused to tour with the album. 
Jackson also once accused Tommy of using the N-word on an unnamed artist under the label. Though Michael's friend, Rev Al Sharpton, supported Michael's issues with the record label, he didn't like what he said about Tommy Mottola. In his view, Tommy was a good guy who helped black artists and promoted black artists. Rev Sharpton explained, Tommy was the first record executive to step up and offer to help us with respect to corporate accountability when it comes to black music issues. I have known Tommy for 15 or 20 years, and never once have I known him to say or do anything that would be considered racist. I didn't know that Michael planned to personally attack Tommy, but nobody tells Michael Jackson what to do. Sony also defended their CEO by releasing a statement claiming that Michael Jackson's comments were ludicrous and hurtful to say the least. They claimed that Matola was a well-respected employee who sought the progress of JM and all other artists on the label. They accused MJ of abusing the power that came with being a celebrity to slight the character of a hardworking individual like Matola. They then labeled Jackson's claims as bizarre and indicated that his issues probably didn't lie with the marketing or distribution of his album Invincible but elsewhere. Rev Al Sharpton then claimed that he'd received a flurry of phone calls from industry players and big artists expressing their disappointments in MJ's outbursts concerning Jackson's rants. However, many fans supported their idol against Motola and Sony. They claimed that MJ knew what he was talking about but wasn't used to speaking to the media, so he didn't know how to present his issues. They explained if nothing were wrong with how he was being treated at the label, he wouldn't make such statements. The fans surmised that since Michael was a soft-spoken person, something must have definitely triggered him to make such outbursts. They accused all the producers who didn't agree with MJ's outbursts of being part of the rot that their icon was talking about. They concluded that Michael's rants made them uncomfortable, so they allegedly found creative ways of making him go without the trail leading back to them. However, they were not the only ones that the fans linked to the demise of their music icon. The fans also blamed the Illuminati for eliminating MJ. According to them, the secretive group saw MJ as a threat to their business. They explained that the singer had started talking and revealing deep secrets within the organization, and thus, they had to act fast. They surmised that Michael was the only artist bold enough to drag Sony and Tony Matola in the mud in front of the whole world. If he had the confidence to use his power to speak up for the artists struggling under the weight of the Illuminati, then he could bring their entire business to a halt. That is why they carefully planned and executed his demise. Some interesting theories also suggested that Michael Jackson actually passed on two years before, in 2007. According to theory, Michael was replaced by a body double at the O2 Arena to promote his tour. They claimed that Michael looked taller than usual and his fingers looked stumped. Moreover, he arrived at the venue 90 minutes late, led the crowd in a few minutes of This Is It chant, and disappeared right after that. Other sources also claim that the musician was alive in Mexico. They based their theory on one man who claimed he saw the late pop star entering Mexico on the day that his passing was announced. However, up until now, no one in the country has laid their eyes on the pop icon. However, one of the most outrageous and downright mundane theories that surrounded MJ's demise was its link to the former president of Iran, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. According to the theorists, the former president eliminated Michael Jackson to shift attention from the woes he was facing in his country. At the time, Ahmadinejad's popularity was waning, and pockets of protesters were organizing rallies to oust the former leader. However, when MJ passed on, the global attention was shifted to him, with the Iranians momentarily forgetting about politics in their country. Thus, the theorists thought that the former Iranian president planned all that to shift popularity from the crisis in his country. Another theory that made the rounds was that the pop star faked his passing because he was neck deep in debt, and thus needed a plan to escape his debtors. And the only way he knew to do that was to apparently fake his passing, so that while the whole world, including his debtors, thought that he was no more, he would be chilling on some island, far away from probing paparazzi and social media. However, all evidence pointed to the fact that the music icon had indeed passed on, as the Los Angeles coroner's office has officially confirmed that the person in the casket was Michael Jackson. However, that hasn't stopped people from believing that their icon was a victim of the allegedly cruel music industry. Some even wished that the singer and dancer hadn't taken them on the way he did, so they could still enjoy his wonderful tunes and electrifying dance steps. One commenter wrote, If you really sit and think about what he went through, 
I mean, really think about what this did to him or how it must have felt. It's just heartbreaking what these accusers did to him for money. I agree 100%. Others also opined that MJ had fought the music, the apparent wickedness in the music industry so hard that it ended up consuming him. One fan wrote, absolutely agree. You fight against the wrong so hard it consumes you. And when the quiet comes, you can see how broken you become and you wonder why you didn't know exactly when you broke. However, his fans acknowledge that though he isn't with them physically, he'll continue to be with them in their hearts. One obvious die-hard fan summed up those sentiments in these words, Michael will live on forever through all the people who loved him, right PMJ. And with these solemn words, we draw the curtains on today's video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.